The 2023 ASUS Republic of Gamer Strix Scar 17 is a beast of a laptop. Comes with the RTX 4090 and a Ryzen 9 7945HX, as well as 32 gigs of RAM. Now this has a good build quality. Not absolutely stellar. The one thing you're gonna pay for with this laptop is gonna be the performance, not necessarily all the refineries on the build quality. We have an aluminum top cover, a plastic keyboard deck, and a plastic bottom cover. Now the plastic bottom cover, it has that kind of cheap plasticky feel. They didn't go with the really smooth, slightly more refined plastic that we have seen on other Asus products. No offense, Asus, but this kind of reminds me of like something Acer would do. However, it does look a little more refined because I like the design and styling of it, but it just, it's just not that, you know, really nice satisfying plastic. It's just a little bit more of that cheap plastic, but that does save you some money because this laptop comes in at around the $3,000 price point. And I feel like if they use much higher quality materials throughout the laptop, this laptop would be up in the four to $5,000 price point. I'll put links in the description below for the exact live pricing. So if you wanna make a purchase or you wanna check that out, you can use those links. I will get a small commission if you purchase, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, the weight and thickness of this laptop is great. For how much power is packed into this laptop and that it is a 17 inch laptop, it's fairly thin and light. Keep in mind, comparatively, think about the GT77 Titan. That's like a seven or an eight pound laptop and it is absolutely massive. So you're much more on the go friendly with this laptop specifically. Now, I know I complained a little bit about the plastic material, but the laptop is assembled well. You can see the bottom cover fits into the side panels very nicely. So Asus didn't chintz on the build assembly. They did a really good job there. Now, one area that I was a little disappointed with was the ports. As you can see on the right side panel, there's no ports. And on the left side panel, all we have is two USB type A's and a headphone jack. On the back of the laptop, we have two USB type C's, an HDMI and a network port, as well as your power connector. But for such a big laptop and so much opportunity, I feel like they left this laptop wanting for more connectivity. And for me, if I was gonna be doing like a desktop replacement, I would want more connectivity on my laptop. Now, taking a look at the screen, this is a big screen and it does have quite a bit of flex. So if you're a worrier about screen flex, this has some of that for sure. However, it is a color accurate display. It has a 100% sRGB, a 90% Adobe RGB, and a 100% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of 1.03. The color gamut range and color accuracy are excellent. However, the brightness is a little on the dim side. It's about 354 nits of screen brightness. Now, this would be fine if that 90 watt hour battery proved to be uh, more ample and providing great battery life, but it was unable to. This laptop has so much power and such a big screen, even though it was a dim screen and set at 20% screen brightness with battery saver mode on and this panel at 60 Hertz, as well as the Asus Armory crate on eco mode and silent mode, we still only saw five hours and 27 minutes of battery life for productivity, four hours streaming video playback, two hours Photoshop, one hour and 57 minutes for video editing. So battery life is not this laptop strong suit, but who really expected that to happen? Not me. Now speakers are another area that was not too impressive with this laptop. Here's a quick audio sample so you can hear for yourself what they sound like. And as far as the webcam is concerned, here's a sample of the webcam so you can see what that looks like. This is the webcam on the Asus Republic of Gamer Strix Scar and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now the keyboard is great. Not super stoked about the trackpad. I'll talk about that in just a minute. The keyboard is fantastic. It's nice and quiet under my fingers, has a medium to long key travel. So if you're into that more gamer keyboard, it's not quite like a, uh, you know, big old chunky click, 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 click gamer keyboard, but it does have a nice long key travel. Numpad on the right side, full size shift key, full size enter key and backspace, full size shift key on the left side, and then your arrow keys. They're not huge arrow keys, but you do have the arrow keys that are all the same size, which is nice. Now, the trackpad is something I'm not stoked about. It just feels like it's not connected really well to the chassis. It doesn't have the most satisfying click. It feels a little on the dampened side from a negative standpoint, not from like a dampened quiet, but from like it feels loose. So it just kind of feels a little on the rattly side. I feel like they could have done a really good job with the X16 trackpad or the G14 trackpad even. That's a better trackpad that's really assembled nicely to the chassis and is much more satisfying below your finger. I'll give you a quick sample so you can hear what it sounds like, both the keyboard and trackpad.
Now the upgrade path on this laptop is a huge bonus. It comes with 32 gigs of RAM, but you have two swappable RAM slots and two M.2 slots. So you can make a really nice upgrade of this laptop. You're not gonna be bottleneck in that regard. So if you order it with 32 gigs, you could easily upgrade it to 64. You can put more storage in this laptop. It's great for upgrade path. However, if you're big into uh, fingerprints, this laptop would also be great for you. As you can see, there's lots on this top cover. I have kind of oily hands. And so I tend to kind of mark up laptops quite a bit with my fingers and this one is no exception. You can see there, it is not uh, a fingerprint masterpiece. It is a fingerprint masterpiece. It is not absent of fingerprints. Once again, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, links are in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump into the performance benchmarks. Now, as you can see, we scored good in Geekbench, both single core and multi-core, as well as Cinebench R23 single core and multi-core. R23 multi-core was the most impressive benchmark in the simulated benchmark. That tells me that this laptop is going to kill it for multitasking. If you're somebody who has 10 programs open at a time, you're gonna be good. I mean, this thing has multi-core capabilities beyond a lot of what I've seen, almost anything I've seen so far on my channel in 2023. So great job, Ryzen, getting great multi-core functionality. Now, going ahead and looking at Blender Classroom, holy moly. Incredible, 2,060 points on the Blender Classroom benchmark. That is a record setter for me personally on my channel. Heading down into 3D modeling, a 349 for Autodesk 3ds Max, 424 for PTC Creo, a 557 for Autodesk Maya, and a 157 for SolidWorks. That SolidWorks benchmark is great because in order to get that much performance, you'd be getting a laptop from the five to $7,000 range, and this one is around the $3,000 range. You'd be getting a laptop that would have a workstation GPU from NVIDIA, something like the A3000, the A5000, and those laptops can get very expensive. So this has a GeForce RTX GPU and it's getting great performance in SolidWorks is a great sign. And you can save a little money and still have amazing performance. Now going ahead and taking a look at the Photoshop benchmark, wow, great results. 1,358 inside of Photoshop. This laptop will tear through Photoshop, no big deal and even on battery mode. So if you unplug from the charger, you're still gonna get a 1,035. That's the benchmark I saw while unplugged from the charger. It's actually kind of rare. Normally laptops can drop down by half the performance when you unplug from the charger, and this laptop still has you performing well inside of Photoshop. Keep in mind, you wanna bring the charger along with you though, because the battery can go dead pretty quickly using Photoshop. Now moving on to DaVinci Resolve, one of the best export times I've seen on my channel for 4K video editing four minutes and 21 seconds out of DaVinci Resolve. This thing has no problems with playback, exporting. It's a great fit for DaVinci. Now, taking a look at After Effects before we get into video editing. After Effects has no issues on this laptop. Again, one of the best scores I've seen, a 1,146. It has the RAM you need, it has the GPU you need, and it has a great multitasking capabilities. So while you're running After Effects, you could be doing other things because of that Ryzen 9 processor. So great setup for After Effects. Now going ahead and looking at video editing, this thing destroyed video editing. You can see we have zero drop frames for 6K B-RAW, 6K red footage, and at 8K playback for B-RAW, we only saw 2,927 drop frames. There were laptops last year, gaming laptops, that were dropping that many frames for 6K B-RAW. So that this is doing 8K at that amount of drop frames is crazy. And then as you can see there, 8K red footage, 1,441 drop frames out of the 16,177 in the project. Absolutely bonkers. I mean, like I said, there was laptops last year dropping substantially more than that for 6K. So I'm really impressed that you can be editing 8K footage from this laptop. Now, as far as export times are concerned, 12 minutes for 6K B-RAW, I think that's a record on my channel. I know the GT77 Titan got either close to that or slightly above or slightly below. The benchmarks will tell the truth right now on the screen, but that's incredible. And then two minutes and 18 seconds for 4K if you're a 4K video editor. And if you wanna get into 8K video editing, about a 33 minute export time um, for 8K B-RAW, which I think is great because there's still some laptops from this year editing 6K B-RAW with a 20 some minute export time. If you're looking for a laptop that has killer performance at a reasonable price point, not a budget, reasonable. Like I mentioned in the title, this thing is a beast and you know I'm a huge Legion fan and this thing's like, it's a Legion killer. Is the Strix Scar 17 for you? Some of the drawbacks are the low brightness on the screen, 354 nits, the lack of connectivity when we have only a few selected ports on the back panel and the side panel, the battery life, 
not very great, but that is to be expected with these high performance laptops, even with a 90 watt hour battery. I wish the trackpad was a little bit better. It's a little small in my opinion for me as a creator, and it rattles a little bit, just doesn't feel really firm and secure to the chassis. I think they could have done a better job selecting a different trackpad from their Asus lineup. From a performance standpoint, this thing absolutely destroys. It is a great price point for the performance that you're getting. This is not a cheap laptop by any stretch of the imagination, but you're getting what you pay for when it comes to the Asus Republic of Gamer Strix Scar 17. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase or click or tap the screen for here for more videos about this laptop or other great creator laptops. I'll see you in the next one.